Hey guys, my name's Johnny and today I want to show you a really cool outline effect that you can add to anything or anyone right here in Filmora Pro. So let's take a look at this final project file. We've got this neat outline effect which you might find useful for something as fantastical as a fantasy or sci-fi effect, or something as simple as highlighting something for informational purposes. We've got our footage on the bottom track and a couple white planes on the tracks above. One is to add our glow and the other one adds more atmosphere to the glow. So let's see how we can create this effect from scratch. So let's begin by taking our footage from the media panel and dropping it into our timeline. For this example, I'm going to create a glow around this shot of myself. You can totally do this with non-moving objects in frame 2, but I'm going to tackle doing it on myself since it's a little more challenging. So we're going to start by drawing a mask around the clip itself. Let's go to the rectangle mask tool and hold click on it and select the freehand mask tool. Next, let's draw around our subject. This doesn't need to be exact, but you should try putting a similar level of care into it as I'm doing right here. In the controls panel, let's open the mask headings. and enable keyframing on our masks path by clicking on this circle. Let's also click this icon up here to display the timeline. Next, let's scrub forward and every time there's a significant move, I'll adjust our mask to better outline myself, which will automatically create a new path keyframe. This process is called rotoscoping. For this effect, I don't need to be exact, but it pays to take some time to make this effect look right. So now that we've rotoscoped our subject here, you should have something that looks kind of like this. We're not going to keep this mask on this clip, we're actually going to copy it onto some planes. So let's create a new plane by going to the top of the media panel and clicking on New Plane. We'll make sure the plane is the same size as the timeline by clicking on Match Timeline, and make it white by clicking this white square here. Next, let's drag the plane onto the timeline above our clip. Let's also make sure it starts and ends at the same time of the clip. Next, let's click on the clip again and find the mask we made in the controls panel. Let's copy it with Ctrl or Command C. Then click on our plane and use Ctrl or Command V to paste our mask onto it. Going back to our original clip, if you're trying to highlight the contents of the person or object you've masked, you may find keeping this mask around is useful. But for this effect that I'm making, I won't need it. So I'm going to click on this square to turn off the mask. Meanwhile, on our planes clip properties, let's set the blend to add. Next, let's go to the mask and we're going to duplicate it by hitting Ctrl or Command D. Let's name our top mask Outer Mask and our bottom one Inner Mask and set its blend mode to subtract. This will allow us to create an outline of our subject by tweaking the expansion settings on both of these masks. First, on our outer mask, let's bring the expansion up to 50 pixels and set the feather strength to 100. On our inner mask, let's set the expansion to negative 20 and set our feather strength to 10. When you play this back, it might not look great just yet. We're going to help smooth this out by adding a blur effect. I'll set my radius to 30. Finally, let's give this glow a bit of color by using the Fill Color effect. Now we can choose what color we want the glow to be. I'll give it a nice purple. Let's actually bring our blur up a bit to about 50. So for some practical applications, this might be enough for you guys and you can stop right here. However, if you're going for more of a sci-fi or fantasy look, there's a few more things you can do to make this effect really pop out. We can add a flickering effect to our glow by going to our outer mask and animating our outer mask's expansion value. To do this, let's click this circle by expansion to enable keyframing. Move two frames forward. Let's slightly decrease our expansion value over here to about 40 and we'll move two frames forward again and bring it back to about 50. Now let's highlight these three keyframes and copy them. 
We'll scrub to random parts of the timeline and paste these keyframes. And there we go. Next, I feel like this effect could look a lot cooler if we added some more atmosphere. How can we do that? Well, let's begin by copying our plane, pasting it, and dragging it onto the track above all of our other media. To help me keep track, I'm going to name our second video track Glow and our third one Atmosphere. Let's go to our Atmosphere Planes Masks, and under the outer mask, click the circle beside Expansion to disable keyframing, and lock it in at 60 pixels. Let's add a fractal noise effect to this atmosphere plane and place it in between our blur and fill color effects. If we mute our lower tracks and turn off our fill color, we'll be able to better see what's going on here. We've got this cloudy texture on our outline. So to begin, under Transform, I'm going to decrease the scale a bit so that these clouds are a little more apparent, maybe about 70. Under Subsettings, I'll increase the influence a little bit. Next, under Appearance Color 1, Let's decrease the opacity all the way. I'm going to increase the exposure and lower the offset value. The idea is that I really want to make this noise contrasty. Let's switch to a black background. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's turn on our fill color effect and we'll see this nice colored haze. After turning our other tracks on, we'll see this haze effect in context. If you want to downplay it a bit, you can lower the opacity of this plane. Now, as we can see here, the haze itself isn't moving anywhere. We need it to be moving around so that it looks a little more, well, hazy. So let's go and animate the seed value. At the start of our clip, let's click this circle beside seed to enable keyframing. Scrub to the end of the clip and set it to maybe two. Let's take a look at that. Hmm, maybe let's bring it up to four instead. There we go. Finally, I'm going to top it off with some flare. Drag the anamorphic lens flare effect onto our atmosphere plane. We'll want to change the threshold so that we can just barely see some flare at certain moments. Next, let's set the intensity to about 30 and the blur to about 10 and we'll set the blend mode to add. Under streak, let's set the orientation to horizontal and increase the length so that it fills our frame. Let's set the streak's intensity to three. This is getting pretty crazy, so let's bring up our threshold a bit. And make sure that both the pivot checkboxes are unchecked. Under colorize, you can pick out a color for your flare. I prefer a nice sky blue for mine. Perfect. So that's how you can outline people and objects in Filmora Pro. Are there any other cool effects or techniques you'd like to learn? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Filmora Pro tutorials, and I'll see you guys in the next video.